Well, good morning. It's another day here in a Twisted Knot Woodshop. It's August 17th, 2016, and it's time to build another set of saw horses. The one there and its mating companion that you see is um, almost 20 years old, and it's time to build another set. And so I was surfing around and I found Norm's, Uncle Norm's, uh, design which I thought was very nice and something I had wished I had put on this set right here um, after I had built it and then of course I you know afterthought is always the best um, but I didn't do anything beyond that so I just lived with it and a lot of times you're working out in a job or whatever and you set stuff on the ground and or on the floor and you have to bend over and pick it up and then I was going through some other stuff and I found Uncle Norm's, Norm Abram. I found his sawhorse, which has a shelf down there. And I thought, that is pretty darn keen. And the design is simple. It's nice. The legs aren't splayed out, you know, this way. They're straight, which is fine. It's not going to, you know, decrease the strength issue it'll look just fine and but the way his plan was was the top of it you know the that way would be 36 inches which to me is not wide enough mine that one there you see is 42 inches and the height is 28 inches from the top of the uh, rail there down to the floor and whereas his were 26 and a half so I'm going to take and make this sawhorse to my dimensions and that shelf down there will be just spiffy. So I got the material, uh, it was delivered just a little while ago uh, and the plywood is behind me. I'm not going to bother turning the camera to show that. And uh, so I'm going to get to cutting the parts out and I'll pick this up in a bit. All right, I've got all the parts milled out and I'm preparing to cut the slots, grooves if you will, um, for the legs that go into the top and you can almost see it here in the drawing. Um, in other words, the face of the leg would be even with the edge of the um, top of the sawhorse. Unlike Norm, he put his so that they laid on the surface of this. So in other words, this would stick out. And I thought that was pretty shitty. So um, I'm doing it this way. And what I've got is the sliding table um, set up with um, the dado blade at three quarters of an inch, which is the thickness of the legs. And the top of the board has already been milled to 15 degrees on each side. Um, you can almost, well, here, let me show you another drawing. Um, I gotta go over here where the drawings are. The <clears throat> legs would be received into the top, um, on that 15 degree angle. And, uh, so that's the purpose of what I'm doing now. And I've got it set up with a stop block to do the first to the initial cuts from each end which is three inches and then it will set back from the end three inches plus five inches because I'm going to mill the legs which are currently five and a half down to five inches and that stop block will get moved and allow me to get the exact uh, cut from the initial cut back to the what would be the the width of the leg and I'm gonna do that right now and this is gonna be kind of a peculiar little um, arrangement here when that bevel gets turned around the board will actually will be going that way and so it's gonna be kind of hairy to make sure that it gets stayed uh, up against the fence so that it doesn't get um, well, different. So uh, we're going to turn this on and, and, and you get to see how that goes. 
as soon as I get this tripod into a reasonable position. turned um, okay there's the first one and boy I don't know how that got turned uh, let me do it again and so in case I missed that I'll do the other one Alright, so there it is milled out and now all I gotta do is nibble out from the end of that notch back this way five inches and reset the stop block, in other words five inches this way and um, nibble out in between and we'll be ready to put the legs together. See you in a while. All right, now the notches are all cut and I can just nibble out in between. The stop block has been removed. As you can see it over here, it's gone. And the, uh, I'll just nibble out in between.
that's all there is to it. We'll pick it up when I get ready to uh, throw the legs in there. See you in a bit. All right, here's just a few moments later, and I've got the tops milled out uh, to receive the legs. And the number one rule with mortise and tenons, or in this case, slots, um, the idea is that it's easier to fit the whatever is going into the groove or slot or mortise than it is to make the mortise fit the tongue or in this case the flat part of what would be the leg so I'm going to mill the legs to fit the slot groove gash uh, to receive the legs and I'll just rip off one th these legs come these legs this one by six comes with radius edges um, I don't know if if Home Depot or any of the other ones sell the stuff, but the edges are eased, uh, radius a bit, and it makes it nice in some cases for whatever project you're doing. But in this case, I think I want to I'm going to square up, you know, one edge, take the measurement because I know they're all the same based on the stop block that was set on the saw, so I can cut off one I can cut off one edge and then set the saw so that it fits those slots uh, just tighter in a bull's ass at fly time. So I'll get back to that in just a bit. All right, so my tape says that this is four and 15 sixteenths. So I'm burning an inch here, so I'm reading, actually reading five and 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to set this off for a little bit strong of that and uh, make the first rip, test it, and then we'll see. So um, I'm a little bit strong at 15 16. Say, that's pretty damn good. Yep. Take a look. Can you see a gap in there? Can you? Huh? Huh? Can you? Hmm? Hmm? Can you? No. No, you can't. You know why? Because, well, that's why I'm me and that's, well, that's it. Okay. I'll be back in a little bit. By the way, that leg's going the wrong way. It should be going up the other direction, but you'll get the idea in a bit. All right, I'm all set up here, ready to put the legs into those receiving uh, joints there. And I've got my wooden knock-knock and a bottle of glue, a brush, a wet rag, and the drill for the, it's a countersink, tapered countersink drill bit. Um, let me put it in front of the white there where you can see it. And um, it drills a tapered hole uh, to receive the, you know, the screws, which a lot of people think are tapered, but they're really not. Um, and uh, so here we go. These acid brushes that you can get from Harbor Freight for like a million of them for 29 cents um, are really nice. They're, they're excellent. They're a lot better than using your finger for sure. And But what's nice about them is that you don't really feel too awful terrible when you toss one out. Um, but they, uh, they do do their job. I've left these 
these legs a little proud of the tops because I didn't want them I didn't want to have to be so meticulous in um, in having the top surface of this exactly flush with that because well I really didn't care um, but I wanted it proud so that it was you know, it wouldn't have to take so much time and trouble um, and it worked out pretty good and the only idea here is to make sure that you get it flush with the top so you don't have to come back and monkey with that later just lovely all right <clears throat> no sense in you watching me putting on seven more legs so we'll pick this up when we get to the shelf unit department toodaloo well good morning <clears throat> it's another day here and I've got the basic units put together um, they're all assembled as far as the legs are concerned and now it's time to do the gussets and based on the fact that these aren't pianos uh, the material is not guaranteed to be exactly you know true uniform I mean they're close close enough for for me but what I've done is cut the gussets a little wild uh, wild meaning a little wider than the nominal dimension that I, I went I went to each of the ends and measured all of them um, and got the nominal dimension and I went over to the radio arm saw and cut the gussets based on that nominal dimension and the process of doing that was kind of simple um, take you over here to the radio arm saw What I did was set the saw to 15 degrees, pulled it through, and that would leave the saw mark. And, shucks, hang on a second. Okay, so I basically cut the pieces uh, based on that nominal dimension. And now that that line there indicating the saw blade, if I take the piece that I'm going to cut, and let's say it has that pencil mark on it, I can lay that pencil mark on that saw line and I know that when I draw the saw through that I'm going to be on that line based on based on the width of this here so if I put a pencil mark here because I know that this side is flush to the other side I put a pencil mark I take that over there and put it on that saw line and those parts will be um, exact to this width from here to here so we're going to do that right now I know I've got that gusset flush to this side over here I've got a sharp pencil Back over to the 
table, the radial arm saw. Here we go. And if you look really closely, you can see the pencil line is still right there. Go back over to here. And this is AC plywood, so you know, one side is kind of not so nice looking, the other side is sanded. We want the nice sanded side visible. And if I hold it up there where it's supposed to go, it's marvelous. Okay, four more to go, and I'll be back. All right, all the gussets have been cut out, and I'm over here at the drill press getting ready to drill the holes for the screws and I've laid out lines here to go where you know to show where the where the holes will be for the screws and I've set up a fence and the depth of the uh, drill bit or in this case the countersink bit is set to three eighths of an inch inside of here so that the it because those legs are three quarters of an inch and i've got the depth set so that it just makes the surface of the uh of the wood here where the, the screw is countersunk properly and we're going to do that now And there they are. I'll pick this up when we get to go cutting the dados down, or the groove, down here in just a bit. Okay, all the gussets have been drilled for the screw locations, and now it's time to cut the dado down here that will receive the shelf from the, uh, that will be supported by the gussets and the strip along the between the legs but <clears throat> to cut that dado um, you could probably do it in several different ways you know set up a fence and use a router router um, or you could use a dado blade but you got these weird angels on there and so how do you how do you do that well here in the twisted knot wood shop I have a sliding um, table that, or sliding fence, and it's capable of adjusting to angles. You can see them there along that bar there. And assuming that the fence is set up square to the blade to begin with, then that those angle measurements there are pretty darn accurate. But obviously, a lot of you people aren't going to have this kind of a situation. Um, thankfully, I've got it, but um, uh, but there are other ways. So, how can you do that? Well, 
if you have a regular table saw and like maybe it could even be a tabletop it doesn't matter but a sled is nice and but when you stick this on there it's obviously not going to be uh, parallel with the blade so how do you fix that well what you do is you cut yourself a 15 in this case 15 degree angle block so that it fits in in behind there and then that will now register the gusset to your block and then you can push it straight through and get a nice straight cut down here uh, regardless of this angle so but over here since I've got this fancy little arrangement I've got the blade uh, it's a dado blade set for three quarters which is the thickness of the plywood and a stop on the rail there to register the short point and I'll just push it through and I've already double checked with the square to make sure that that this line is running parallel with the blade so that the groove will be um, straight along this line right here and we're going to do that right now. And there it be, one groove, three quarters of an inch wide, for instance, ta-da, see, looky, see, look, isn't that nice, huh, hmm? isn't that nice, okay, so that's quarter inch deep, plenty enough to support it, by the time glue gets in there and screws get shoved in there, it'll be, it'll be just magnificent, okay, off to the next step. Okay, now it's time to mill the pieces that go this way against the legs on the inside that will hold the shelf. And according to the SketchUp model, um, it says 1 and 23 30 seconds. And the reason for that weird measurement is because of the bevel that's on there um, so that the top of this is flat with the shelf. And I'm not so concerned about that, but the problem is is that these one by sixes are five and a half inches, half of that is two and three quarters. But if I cut it two and three quarters, one piece won't be the same dimension because two and three quarters is half of five and a half. So I'm making them two and eleven sixteenths. And I've got the saw set up for that right over here. And my rule here in this shop is anything less than three inches on a rip that a push stick is involved. And three inches and more, no problem, but three inches and less, a push stick is mandatory.
You notice how the second cut of the other piece was hardly cutting. That was the reason for dropping it down to 2 and 11 16. So the space, the kerf of the blade taken away from the first cut would have left the 2 and 11 16. So um, that worked out pretty good. Now it's time to cut the groove down those pieces to accept the shelf. And I'll set up the saw over there to do that here in a bit. And we'll pick this up in the short. All right, I'm over here set up at the table saw. And since looking at the saw horse from the end view, you technically have a left and you have a right. And since these individual boards have a radius edge on them from, like I showed you before, from, can you see the same thing I'm seeing? Have a radius edge from the factory, I would kind of like to keep those down. So that means that since there's a left and right, I have to run, and because the saw blade is set on an angle, I have to run two pieces through the saw with the with the table saw on the edge against the fence and the other two pieces with the factory edge against the piece or against the fence. So that's what we're going to do right now. The saw blade is set to 15 degrees. The fence is set to approximately the center. Again, these aren't pianos. Um, and but the depth on the short side over here is a quarter inch. And you can see how it comes out. 15 degree angle, so in other words, it'd be like that against the leg, so that that's flat. the next step or back to the next step on to the next step see you in a while okay remember earlier I said that because the two by or excuse me one by uh, six is five and a half half of that's two and three quarters and I cut the individual pieces uh, two and eleven sixteenths to uh, make up for the thickness of the blade however that they weren't exactly you know uniform but here when I what I'm getting ready to do now is cut the bevel for the when this is sitting in the sawhorse legs between them the top of this won't be flat with the shelf 
So what I'm going to do is I got the fence set, the blade at 15 degrees, and I'm going to push all of these through and now all of these will end up, these individual pieces will end up being the same dimension. Now if we go over here to the saw horses this is, is and I take this here piece that we just milled and stick it up there. Oh, can you see the same thing I am? Um the damn I can't Okay, notice the, if I slide it out, that the bevel up here is the same 15 degrees as what would be between the leg here and the top, and the groove that was milled earlier is level with the top, so that's, by the time it's down here where it's supposed to go, the shelf can slide in and um, this now surface is flat with the shelf. Is that an anal thing? No, I don't think so. Um, it just looks nicer, I suppose. But is it? would it be necessary to do that? No, but I think, it, like I said, it looks nicer. So we're gonna put the end cap, we're gonna put the end cap on uh, the gusset and then we'll register these strips to the groove on the gusset and I'll show you how we're going to do that in just a little while. Okay, now that all the members for supporting the shelves have been milled, it's time to fasten them to the legs. And the principle here is to put one of the gussets on first and then determine where the supporting shelf member needs to go and you could you know like look in there and get it close and hopefully that it's not you know going to move or whatever but the easiest way to align that groove with that groove is to use a piece of material that's the same thickness as your shelf and what you do is you just stick it in there stick this part in there and if those two come together, you know, slide, you know, in to each other, then you can fasten this. And um, I've got lines set up there based on based on the dimension of this here to where glue goes, so I don't get it slopped all over the place. But that's the next step. And the end cap over here the this one the other gusset does not get fastened until after the shelf is slid into its you know grooves and then this cap can or the gusset can go on so that's what i'm going to do next and we'll um, be back in a bit okay now it's time for some assembly and assuming that all of your equipment is accurately set up and angles that you cut are consistent <clears throat> then you can put a lot of faith into the like this gusset where you can see clearly that the leg is short of coming to the point 
and all angles are consistent, um, meaning 15 degrees up here is 15 degrees down here. That might mean because the legs are bowed a little bit or whatever, um, but that's easily um, overcome. So what I've got is I put the gusset up here and I made two pencil marks there and there to where to stop the glue. So we'll put that on there. And then brush it out. I don't care if it slops over a little bit, I can wipe it off there after, after the gusset is down. I just don't want to care to go past the line, in other words, waste glue, not that I'm frugal or anything, it's just, well, there's no sense in wasting glue. I got a wet rag at the ready, and so we set the, I got these numbered, um, it's not that it was an issue, but it was easier to keep track of them after I cut them, um, to, uh, know which one, which position they went into, and to get the first set of, the first two screws in there, I'm going to clamp them up, um, ensuring that these two short points of this gusset is uh, aligned with, remember, I marked the long point of the uh, top here, on there and then I went to the radio arm saw to cut them based on that dimension so that's where it gets registered to and if I clamp it down there so they don't move I can drive the screws Then, if I turn this a bit where I can get to it, if I put my waist in here, I can spread this apart. If you do this, you won't have to fight it as bad. I don't know. The material seems to be pretty nice. It's just that it's um, giving me a little bit of a little bit of a problem here, but it isn't nothing I can't fix. All I got to do is figure out how. use the other gusset as a wedge. I don't know what I do if 
if I'd had a smaller, smaller workbench, I'd probably be going crazy. Four foot by eight foot is, I wanted to build a five foot by ten foot, but I ended up doing it this way. The old shop I had a uh, same workbench, four foot by eight foot, but um, when I started designing a new shop, I toyed an awful lot with ten foot, five foot by ten foot, but um, since the other one worked so well, I opted to go with that size instead. All right, so the idea here is, like I showed you earlier, to set the set the uh, the rails in there properly and use the uh, the same material that you're going to make the shelf out of and cut a little square unit so that it will slip into as I said like that and that way you don't have to rely on your eyeball and and if it's joining here and there that means the shelf will slide in there you know from the other end because that one's going to be left loose because this one's now secured and I've already got one assembled uh, I did that. Hang on. Stupid camera. Already got one assembled and it's very nice. Um, Norm had, when I got this idea from Uncle Norm, um, his legs were outside on this bevel. And I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's just, to me, personally, that having them inset gives a little bit more strength. It's easier to set the legs because your, your grooves are delineated when you cut them on the saw. Whereas what he did was come in from the end and marked a one inch line, laid the leg up there, and then glued and screwed it. Well, to me, that seems like too much of an option for, you know, uh, screwing up the you know, not having the leg exactly right and then to be, you know, this way and, and it just looks stupid. And, but to me, this looks a lot cleaner. Uh, I guess I got glue shine in there. Uh, I'll sand that down. But after, you know, uh, six months, the thing's gonna look like shit anyway. Um, but the thing about what I'm enjoying so far, I'm waiting for the glue to dry before I try it, but Norm, on his, he stood up, uh, and Norm's a pretty big boy. Uh, I've met him uh, a couple of times. Well, you only meet somebody once. I've met him, and then again, um, seen him. And he actually stood up on this shelf, and um, uh, you know, to get that much elevation, <clears throat> which is at this particular moment is about. 17 and a half inches so that's pretty nice um what's going to be really nice is that you can put tools and um drills or whatever and they won't have to be laying on the floor bend over so far to get them especially the skill saw oh god damn skill saw for me i mean i'm constantly laying it on the ground i feel like i'm a, a gnome by the time i get done with the job uh, bending over and picking up so many times. A lot of carpenters will take on a set of saw horses and put a hook, actually it's a nail, and hang their skill saw off of that. Well, that I've never really liked that idea because it's you know it's too too easy for you to get snagged on. Um, but other than that, uh, I can't see anything wrong with this. It's it's um, let me back up here a bit. Um, the the extension table and the outfeed table are level, so um, just like the workbench, but you can see that the saw horse doesn't wobble. Um, it's nice. Uh, it's light. Um, they'll, the keen thing is they'll stack, but the problem, 
the it's not a problem so much I guess the other saw horses I showed you at the beginning of this video have been sitting outside for the last almost 20 years well obviously these won't be sitting outside because water and snow and you know shit will get collected up there in the shelf and pretty soon it'll turn into look like a like a like a bump on a frog's ass so uh, these things are gonna have to be stored inside not here in this shop next door probably but i'm happy with them they look nice uh they're rigid and they'll do a good job and i thank you for watching and i'm just gonna reassemble or reassemble assemble this last one and uh i'll be done take care and we'll talk to you later twisted knot witch up thank you for watching